Today we are trying out the Tour Response Stripe Golf Ball by TaylorMade. And if you know me at all, you know that the TP5 is my favorite golf ball. I love playing it. I buy them very cheap for $2 a ball or less used, and I have a lot of them. I'm a, I've kind of turned into a bit of a collector of TP5. So when I saw the Tour Response Stripe announced this spring, I said, you know what, this would be interesting to me. I don't necessarily like the Tour Response because it's just less popular, so it's very hard to get used. I pretty much have to buy it new if I want to buy it at all. And, the, you know, the prices are a lot higher because of that so this is a, a, a new concept here it seems to be direct competition with the Srixon divide basically a ball that has direct visual indication of whether or not you're putting properly whether or not you're aligning properly and this is what it says for the ball a tour quality 100 cast urethane golf ball with advanced alignment technology designed for higher performance at a lower price so just based on that statement i will give you a very brief summary of my thoughts 100 cast urethane golf ball you know, I don't know what these words actually mean, but I will tell you right now, it is not the same cover the TP5 has. I've been using TP5s for a long time, and there is nothing that you will ever replicate. When you strike that golf ball in the center of the face, it feels like something unlike anything I have ever had happen to me on a golf course. You know exactly what ball that is, and you know exactly where you hit it when you hit it. And it's just become really something I've relied on. You know, the feel of the golf ball itself is very attractive. And I don't just mean with the actual club face. The first time I ever picked up a TP5, held it in my hands, I knew it was a golf ball I wanted to have with me for the rest of my golf career. It just kind of inspires confidence. Like I just feel like a better player when I have it in my hands. And because of that, I've really enjoyed playing it almost every round that I've played since then. So I'm not exactly sure what's supposed to be different about this ball, why it's $10 cheaper a dozen, you know, why it's cheaper at all. Uh, they seem to be using a lot of the same words, so I don't fully understand that portion either but i can say that it does not feel like the tp5 off the club face nor in the hand and that is a big problem for me as silly as it might sound it's clearly a different golf ball so is it much better or worse in terms of value because of that i don't actually know what i can say about the cover though is it is just as durable we hit a couple shots off like a car path and off a tree in this video and it's perfect like it's not dinged up at all that's one of the things i love about the tp5 you could bounce this thing off a brick and it will not show any type of wear whatsoever incredibly durable cover even buying them used like you get them used and they are supposed to be like triple a quality or whatever like that and they look like they're brand new a lot of them so the only thing you ever see is it kind of like loses its sheen a little bit l less lustery when you look at it but realistically it feels the exact same way and you know i don't know if this ball is going to be like that because it already feels pretty dull off the face it kind of feels like a little heavy and you know i'm maybe not swinging the ball great so it's hard to compare last year's swings to this year's but i did tee up a couple tp5s today alongside these as well and it's a very different ball that is for sure the next thing they mentioned is the advanced alignment technology and without question that works i will tell you it's very noticeable you can see in some of the putting footage it's actually really interesting how you can tell exactly how well you rolled the ball just because of the way the, the stripe itself is interacting now uh, unfortunately for the video but fortunately for me i had an absolutely gem of a day with the wedges like i hit these wedges to an absolute dime definitely the best i've had all year if not my whole career so we didn't have a lot of putts <laughs> at the end i am going to show a couple extra putts just to show what it looks like to see it wobble versus to hit it pure and i will say that it's a very different you know like it the thing i didn't expect to like or the thing i d expected to dislike about the ball was the fact that you know at some times you see it yellow sometimes you see it white that was the thing i disliked it the most about the srixon divide was you know sometimes like if you tee the ball up you have to like I, I had to like place it in a certain way that when i look down at it i wouldn't see the yellow at all like let me just see one color i don't want to be seeing two colors it was kind of changing my focal point like if i'm looking at a certain dimple on the golf ball or something like that it was like a little bit different based on the angle the ball was at with relative relativity to my eye you know i'm just a head case like that so that that did get a little bit distracting a little bit annoying it was kind of the same thing with finding the ball too like if i hit the ball and the blue side was up in the rough it was hard to find if i hit it in the yellow side was up it was easy to find it was kind of frustrating kind of annoying and it was like almost like a random chance like oh am i going to be able to find this easy or is it going to be harder well the best thing about this ball is it's not distracting it's not you know visually different enough the good thing is you know these two colors are very different from each other but they're not that different from something you'd see on a golf ball like you wouldn't see a bright blue ball very often you know maybe i chose the wrong color to 
ch try out the Strixon ball, but these these colors make a lot more sense because that yellow is already a color they offer and the white is obviously the standard golf ball color. But the thing about it is it's really noticeable. The thing that I love about this golf ball is you know exactly where your ball is as you're walking up to it. Do you guys ever have this problem where, you know, you're walking down the fairway, you're looking for your ball and you see something off maybe like, you know, 50 some yards ahead, like you're still getting really, you're still pretty far away from it, but you're getting closer and you think, oh, that must be my ball there. And you start walking and as you get closer, you start to realize that you're not looking at your golf ball. You're looking at maybe a leaf or some kind of garbage on the ground or something that might look like a golf ball, but isn't actually your ball. Well, you will never make that mistake if you play this ball again, because it is so different looking than any other golf ball and any other object that could be on the ground. You will never forget which ball you have in play and it's really cool because of that i have a lot of trouble finding golf balls we did a whole review on the super soft max last year which was a big it was actually bigger ball and it was yellow as well so it was easy to find that was the easiest golf ball i've ever played to find and it's something that's super frustrating to me especially in the summers when they grow the rough out really long but this ball is not far away from that i could not believe like you can literally see this ball in the fairway from 100 yards away no problem i know exactly where it is and it plugged multiple times today it was super wet and I still you can still see it kind of you know because that white and yellow they're different enough and there's there's that dotted black line as well and that line can actually like you can kind of see that as you're walking up to the ball it's kind of got like a it almost looks like a thick black line separating the yellow and the white but absolutely on the putting surface you will notice you can line it up it's it's you know I don't know to be honest like any ball seems easy to line up I use the arm lock putter so it's very easy I just kind of draw a line with the shaft of the putter kind of like if you ever see Bryson and DeChambeau, he does the same thing. I've been doing that for lining up the putts. It seems like really foolproof, to be honest. And I don't really ever have problems lining up putts. Like I've, I've, I pretty rarely hit the ball where I don't want to hit the ball with the putter. I just usually have a lot of trouble actually like judging the distance or reading the greens. Those are my two big problems with putting. If I were to have problems, those would definitely be it. And obviously this ball doesn't solve that. Like, so if you're buying a golf ball, I think like now they're, they're running out of people to market to, right? Like they, they did the whole like, oh my God, this ball is literally going to go farther than theoretically possible by a golf ball you know it's like they're, they're lying about everything else right like let's say the golf ball flies higher spins more doesn't spin on a lot though if you hit it bad you know? it's like they make up everything they possibly can what's left well now they're going to start talking about putting like you hit this golf ball with a putter and it goes in the hole that's the going to be the next thing right this ball is not going to solve any of your putting problems but if for some reason you find you have problems with aligning the putt then yeah this ball absolutely does work for that and i will say that it's actually a a really good like putting wow. aid like if you're looking to actually kind of see the veracity of your putting stroke like see it in play this ball is going to do that that was the coolest thing about the ball was it's like wow i did not hit a good putt there you can see it kind of wobble side to side or you can see it roll perfect and you're like wow that was a great stroke and it's also really cool on camera that same thing i didn't think i would like when i actually struck the ball out in the fairway and in the rough and stuff like i thought you would see it kind of flying through the air and i'd be like hmm. and maybe it's a little dull or maybe it's a little awkward or something like that because I didn't like that about the Strixon Divide. It was like, you know, if you hit it a certain way, it, it might kind of trick your eye. Like I'm thinking like, did I, did I, did I slice that or something? Like just because of the way it's spinning, you're thinking it's spinning in, in a more aggressive way. And then like you watch it later on camera and you're like, oh no, that's like not even fading, you know? So uh, th this did kind of trick my eye a little bit in the air, but it didn't really matter. Like it's just kind of a superficial thing anyway. Uh, and I thought I was dislike the way this ball was designed more than I did. So I'm actually really satisfied with the visuals of the ball. Uh, I will say that, you know, the, the lower price point thing being $40, like, let's not beat around the bush here. TaylorMade is charging a lot of money for its golf products. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. They have a lot of cool like collectibles and a lot of cool charming stuff going on with them. They have a great media presence as well, but their their stuff is just overpriced. I mean, I'm not, not going to lie about it. I mean, pretty much every manufacturer is, is, is overpriced to some degree, but it's getting a bit ridiculous here. Uh, so I don't really know what, you know, if you, you, yeah, you you've it. seen other reviews on this topic between the tour response versus the TP five let me know because i don't know what's supposed to be different about this ball the only thing i will say is it felt worse off the face it, it felt a lot harder honestly like it, it felt very like kind of clicky like you know I, I didn't really feel like a very good resonance with the golf club when i struck it and and obviously it's really not that much cheaper from a tp5 so if i can buy this ball used the same way i can buy a tp5 used and commensurate value on that then yeah maybe it would be less of an issue but i'm getting tp5 so cheap because they're so popular that it seems kind of silly to even consider playing any other ball right now like i'm literally getting tp5s for like two dollars to a dollar fifty a ball very easily all over the place why would i buy any type of you know 
knockoff basically anything that's not a tp5 for anything more than that you know so not necessarily anything to do with the ball but those are my thoughts on it so go ahead and enjoy the rest of this nine holes we will catch up at the end i do want to show you something on camera and i will give our closing thoughts there but thanks for tuning in we'll see you soon
So in terms of closing thoughts, I will say don't buy this ball because it's $10 cheaper than a TP5. If you play TP5s, just keep buying TP5s. They have a lot of cool alignment stuff going on on the TP5. Now, if they made a ball with this same design for the TP5, then we'd have a whole different conversation ahead of us here. Is this ball worth it just for the design? To be honest, maybe. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I will say that it's really nice to see the ball roll true. Hopefully you saw that in the footage at the end there. What it looks like when it rolls kind of end over end is very, very different than when it rolls true. And you can learn a lot about that. Like it can be a putting aid, to be honest. Like literally this could be a putting aid. So could be worth it just for that. That'd be up to you. Just don't buy it because it, you think it's suddenly going to transform your putting. Like ask yourself this, like, do you actually have trouble lining up putts? I mean, to me, that's the problem. Like if the ball doesn't go where I want it, it's almost never because I lined it up poorly. But you can tell that if you did line it up poorly and it doesn't go where you want it and it starts to wobble side to side, then you're like, oh, okay. I know I imparted some, you know, some spin on the ball that shouldn't be there. But I did want to just show something really quick because here, here's a tour response, the, the white one, and here's the yellow one, okay? I want to compare that to a TP5, a yellow TP5, okay? So we have the tour response here. We have a, a white TP5. We have a yellow TP5. And I will say that, you know, they do look very similar. I think it's the exact same color. I think if you put them side by side, they're very similar. The weird thing about the TP5 and probably the tour response as well is I don't think it's the same cover as the white one. I asked this a while back on the golf Reddit, and it was like the responses seem to be like dismissive of it. But I swear that this is not the same as the white one. It doesn't even look the same. Like it's it's like you could see almost like a crystalline finish to it. You know, TaylorMade doesn't necessarily say anything about that, but it does also feel differently off the club face compared to the white one. I like the yellow ones too. They're fine. But the white ones are the ones that it's like, it's just different. And the, the picks as well, those are the same. But when you hit the yellow one, it's like, it's a little different. And I think it's not painted. I think it's actually the cover is just straight up yellow. And that's the difference. The biggest difference here, you can tell this is painted. And so if you scuff one of these, it's still yellow, like on the inside, you know what I I mean like it's a layer of yellow this is actually just paint i think or something on this the front because if you buy one of these take a really hard look at it and you could see like spots of white in between the green or the yellow on this ball here and i'm not really sure why like i don't know if that's supposed to look like that or what but it makes it kind of look cheesy like a little bit unprofessional i guess is what i would say it's really weird how it's not like a uniform green it's kind of like spotted green you don't it really looks like it looks like an easter egg you ever put those kind of those wraps on the easter egg that's exactly what it looks like so you want to buy them buy them because it's easter i mean that's coming up right but the main difference between these balls and and i don't know how obvious it'll be just by looking at this but when i talk about feel there's only one way i can describe it if you can't get your hands on a ball like this there's only one way i can describe it so we have the two tour responses all right and and so they you know you feel them and they feel like you know, they feel a certain way. I can't really describe it, but they feel good. They feel pretty solid in your hands. You know, they feel fine. And when you rub them together and when you push them, you know, push them together, they're circular, right? And so they're going to fight a little bit, you know, like you're never going to be able to get them to, to, to kind of stay together. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're circular, right? And they're kind of slippery. So you can't really do that. You can't really get them to stay together. That's the tour response. But watch what happens if I do the same thing with two mid condition TP5s. Okay, watch this. See this? I'm actually pushing the same, I, I swear, I am pushing the same together and they actually get stuck. They actually get stuck. You can literally push them like when they rub against each other. I, I don't know what that is, but that's the only way I could visually show it. Like that's the only thing I could show. These balls are actually like, I don't know what it is, but the cover is just different. And you, you don't get that with the tour response. I don't know what the difference actually is. Like, you know, just probably some kind of chemical makeup, but I can do this all the time where I just, I do this all the time when I'm on the course. I just kind of rub them together and it just feels so, I don't know, it's indescribable. And it is absolutely the reason why I fall in love with this ball. Just kind of feel these covers and, uh, once you hit that sweet spot middle of the club with these balls you'll never you'll never forget that feeling honestly that's the way i feel about it so so my point is it's definitely a different cover i'm not exactly sure what or why and i don't have the track man in front of me to tell me exactly what's happening here but just the feel of it is certainly a different the tour response in general nothing necessarily about the stripe ball but you know when you're buying that you're probably they're probably trying to attract you to buy this the stripe and the tour response right like if not they would be offering that on the tp5 as well right so there's obviously a reason biggest thing though you know just being able to find the 
golf ball. I love that about it. Probably my favorite actual feature on it. So if you guys have played this golf ball, please let me know. Let me know what you feel, especially if you played other tailor-made balls, other premium golf balls. Is this an actual competitor for the Strixon? I don't actually know. The Strixon dozen is $5 cheaper, a completely different type of design, but I feel like it's the same principle. You know, I've never actually played the Q star properly, so I don't know. I've heard really good things about the Z star. I don't fully understand how golf balls compete against each other. So if any of you guys know anything about that, please let me know. Otherwise, I hope this has helped. <laughs> Happy Easter, and we will see you guys in the next one.